Hello, and welcome to Neptune. Neptune is the eighth and farthest known solar planet from the Sun. In the solar system, it is the fourth largest planet by diameter, the third most massive planet, and the densest giant planet. It is 17 times the mass of the Earth and slightly more massive than its near twin, Uranus. Neptune is denser and physically smaller than Uranus because its greater mass causes more gravitational compression of its atmosphere. It is referred to as one of the solar system's two ice giant planets, the other one being its near twin, Uranus. Being composed primarily of gases and liquids, it has no well-defined solid surface. The planet orbits the Sun once every 164.8 years at an average distance of 30.1 astronomical units, or 2.8 billion miles. It is named after the Roman god of the sea, and has an astronomical symbol representing Neptune's trident. Neptune is not visible to the unaided eye, and is the only planet in the solar system found by mathematical prediction rather than by empirical observation. Unexpected changes in the orbit of Uranus led Alexis Bouvard to hypothesize that its orbit was subject to gravitational perturbation by an unknown planet. After Bouvard's death, the position of Neptune was predicted from his observations, independently by John Couch Adams and Urbain Le Verrier. Neptune was subsequently observed with a telescope on the 23rd of September, 1846, by Johann Gale, within a degree of the position predicted by Le Verrier. Its largest moon, Triton, was discovered shortly thereafter, though none of the planet's remaining 13 known moons were located telescopically until the 20th century. The planet's distance from Earth gives it a very small apparent size, making it challenging to study with Earth-based telescopes. Neptune was visited by Voyager 2 when it flew by the planet on the 25th of August, 1989. Voyager 2 remains the only spacecraft to have visited Neptune. The advent of the Hubble Space Telescope and large ground-based telescopes with adaptive optics has recently allowed for additional detailed observations from afar. Like Jupiter and Saturn, Neptune's atmosphere is composed primarily of hydrogen and helium, along with traces of hydrocarbons and possibly nitrogen, though it contains a higher proportion of ices such as water, ammonia, and methane. However, similar to Uranus, its interior is primarily composed of ices and rock. Uranus and Neptune are normally considered to be ice giants to emphasize this distinction. Traces of methane in the outermost regions in part account for the planet's blue appearance, though an unknown component is believed to color Neptune a deeper blue compared to Uranus. In contrast to the hazy, relatively featureless atmosphere of Uranus, Neptune's atmosphere has active and visible weather patterns. For example, at the time of the Voyager 2 flyby in 1989, the planet's southern hemisphere had a great dark spot comparable to the great red spot of Jupiter. More recently, in 2018, a newer main dark spot and smaller dark spot were identified and studied. In addition, these weather patterns are driven by the strongest sustained winds of any planet in the solar system, with a recorded wind speed as high as 1,300 miles per hour. Because of its great distance from the sun, Neptune's outer atmosphere is one of the coldest places in the solar system, with temperatures at its cloud tops approaching negative 361 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures at the planet's center are approximately 9,300 degrees Fahrenheit. Neptune also has a faint and fragmented ring system labeled ARCS, which was discovered in 1984, then later confirmed by Voyager 2. Neptune's mass of 1.0243 times 10 to the 26th kilograms is intermediate between the Earth and the larger gas giants. It is 17 times that of Earth, but just 1 19th that of Jupiter. Its gravity at one bar is 11.15 meters per second squared, or 1.14 times the surface gravity of the Earth, and is surpassed only by Jupiter. 
Neptune's equatorial radius of 24,764 kilometers is nearly four times that of the Earth. Neptune, like Uranus, is an ice giant, a subclass of giant planet because they are smaller and have higher concentrations of volatiles than Jupiter and Saturn. In the search for exoplanets, Neptune has been used as a metonym. Discovered bodies of similar mass are often referred to as Neptunes, just as scientists refer to various extrasolar bodies as Jupiters. Neptune's internal structure resembles that of Uranus. Its atmosphere forms about 5 to 10 percent of its mass and extends perhaps 10 to 20 percent of the way towards its core, where it reaches pressures of about 100,000 times that of Earth's atmosphere. Increasing concentrations of methane, ammonia, and water are found in the lower regions of the atmosphere. The mantle is equivalent to 10 to 15 Earth masses and is rich in water, ammonia, and methane. As is customary in planetary science, this mixture is referred to as icy, even though it is a hot, dense fluid. This fluid, which has a high electrical conductivity, is sometimes called a water-ammonia ocean. The mantle may consist of a layer of ionic water, in which the water molecules break down into a soup of hydrogen and oxygen ions, and deeper down, super-ionic water, in which the oxygen crystallizes, but the hydrogen ions float around freely within an oxygen lattice. At a depth of 7,000 kilometers, the conditions may be such that methane decomposes into diamond crystals that rain downwards like hailstones. Scientists also believe that this kind of diamond rain occurs on Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus. Very high-pressure experiments at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory suggest that the top of the mantle may be an ocean of liquid carbon with floating solid diamonds. The core of Neptune is likely composed of iron, nickel, and silicates, with an interior model giving a mass of about 1.2 times that of the Earth. The pressure at the center is about twice as high as that at the center of the Earth, and the temperature may be as high as 5,400 Kelvin. At high altitudes, Neptune's atmosphere is 80% hydrogen and 19% helium. A trace amount of methane is also present. Prominent absorption bands of methane exist at wavelengths above 600 nanometers in the red and infrared portion of the spectrum. As with Uranus, this absorption of red light by the atmospheric methane is part of what gives Neptune its blue hue, although Neptune's vivid azure differs from Uranus's milder cyan. Because Neptune's atmospheric methane content is similar to that of Uranus, some unknown atmospheric constituent is thought to contribute to Neptune's color. Neptune's atmosphere is subdivided into two main regions, the lower troposphere, where temperature decreases with altitude, and the stratosphere, where temperature increases with altitude. The boundary between the two, the tropopause, lies at a pressure of 0.1 bars. The stratosphere then gives way to the thermosphere at a pressure lower than 1 to 10 pascal. The thermosphere gradually transitions to the exosphere. Models suggest that Neptune's troposphere is banded by clouds of varying compositions depending on altitude. The upper level clouds lie at pressures below one bar, where the temperature is suitable for methane to condense. For pressures between one and five bars, clouds of ammonia and hydrogen sulfide are thought to form. Above a pressure of five bars, the clouds may consist of ammonia, ammonium sulfide, hydrogen sulfide, and water. Deeper clouds of water ice should be found at pressures of about 50 bars, where the temperature reaches 0 degrees Celsius. Underneath, clouds of ammonia and hydrogen sulfide may be found. High-altitude clouds on Neptune have been observed casting shadows on the opaque cloud deck below. There are also high-altitude cloud bands that wrap around the planet at a constant latitude. These circumferential bands have widths of 50 to 150 kilometers, and lie about 50 to 110 kilometers above the cloud deck. These altitudes are in the layer where weather occurs, the troposphere. Weather does not occur in the higher stratosphere or the thermosphere. Neptune's spectra 
suggests that its lower stratosphere is hazy due to the condensation of products of ultraviolet photolysis of methane, such as ethane and ethene. The stratosphere is also home to trace amounts of carbon monoxide and hydrogen cyanide. The stratosphere of Neptune is warmer than that of Uranus due to the elevated concentration of hydrocarbons. For reasons that remain obscure, the planet's thermosphere is at an anomalously high temperature of about 750 Kelvin. The planet is too far from the sun for this heat to be generated by ultraviolet radiation. One candidate for a heating mechanism is atmospheric interaction with ions in the planet's magnetic field. Other candidates are gravity waves from the interior that dissipate in the atmosphere. The thermosphere contains traces of carbon dioxide and water, which may have been deposited from external sources, such as meteorites and dust. Neptune resembles Uranus in its magnetosphere, with a magnetic field strongly tilted relative to its rotational axis at 47 degrees and offset at least 0.55 radius, or about 13,500 kilometers from the planet's physical center. Before Voyager 2's arrival at Neptune, it was hypothesized that Uranus's tilted magnetosphere was the result of its sideways rotation. In comparing the magnetic fields of the two planets, scientists now think the extreme orientation may be characteristic of flows in the planet's interiors. This field may be generated by convective fluid motions in a thin spherical shell of electrically conducting liquids, probably a combination of ammonia, methane, and water, resulting in a dynamo action. The dipole component of the magnetic field at the magnetic equator of Neptune is about 14 microteslas. The dipole magnetic moment of Neptune is about 2.2 times 10 to the 17th tesla times cubic meters. Neptune's magnetic field has a complex geometry that includes relatively large contributions from non-dipolar components, including a strong quadrupole moment that may exceed the dipole moment in strength. By contrast, Earth, Jupiter, and Saturn have only relatively small quadrupole moments, and their fields are less tilted from the polar axis. The large quadrupole moment of Neptune may be the result of offset from the planet's center and geometrical constraints of the field's dynamo generator. Neptune's bow shock, where the magnetosphere begins to slow the solar wind, occurs at a distance of 34.9 times the radius of the planet. The magnetopause, where the pressure of the magnetosphere counterbalances the solar wind, lies at a distance of 23 to 26.5 times the radius of Neptune. The tail of the magnetosphere extends out to at least 72 times the radius of Neptune, and likely much farther. Neptune's weather is characterized by extremely dynamic storm systems, with winds reaching speeds of almost 600 meters per second, or 1,300 miles per hour, nearly reaching supersonic flow. More typically, by tracking the motion of persistent clouds, wind speeds have been shown to vary from 20 meters per second in the easterly direction to 325 meters per second westward. At the cloud tops, the prevailing winds range in speed from 400 meters per second along the equator to 250 meters per second at the poles. Most of the winds on Neptune move in a direction opposite of the planet's rotation. The general pattern of winds showed prograde rotation at high latitudes versus retrograde rotation at lower latitudes. The difference in flow direction is thought to be a skin effect and not due to any deeper atmospheric processes. At 70 degrees south latitude, a high-speed jet travels at a speed of 300 meters per second. Neptune differs from Uranus in its typical level of meteorological activity. Voyager 2 observed weather phenomena on Neptune during its 1989 flyby, but no comparable phenomena on Uranus during its 1986 flyby. The abundance of methane, ethane, and acetylene at Neptune's equator is 10 to 100 times greater than at the poles. This is interpreted as evidence for upwelling at the equator and subsidence near the poles, because photochemistry cannot account for the distribution without meridional circulation. In 2007, it was discovered that the upper troposphere of Neptune's south pole was about 10 Kelvin warmer than the rest of its atmosphere, which averages approximately 73 Kelvin, or negative 200 degrees Celsius. 
The temperature differential is enough to let methane, which elsewhere is frozen in the troposphere, escape into the stratosphere near the pole. The relative hot spot is due to Neptune's axial tilt, which has exposed the South Pole to the Sun for the last quarter of Neptune's year, or roughly 40 Earth years. As Neptune slowly moves towards the opposite side of the Sun, the South Pole will be darkened and the North Pole illuminated, causing the methane release to shift to the north. Because of seasonal changes, the cloud bands in the southern hemisphere of Neptune have been observed to increase in size and albedo. This trend was first seen in 1980. The long orbital period of Neptune results in seasons lasting 40 years. In 1989, the Great Dark Spot, an anticyclonic storm system spanning 8,100 by 4,100 miles, was discovered by NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft. The storm resembled the Great Red Spot of Jupiter. Some five years later, on the 2nd of November 1994, the Hubble Space Telescope did not see the Great Dark Spot on the planet. Instead, a new storm, similar to the Great Dark Spot, was found in Neptune's northern hemisphere. The Scooter is another storm, a white cloud group farther south than the Great Dark Spot. This nickname first arose during the months leading up to the Voyager 2 encounter in 1989, when they were observed moving at speeds faster than the Great Dark Spot, and images acquired later would subsequently reveal the presence of clouds moving even faster than those that had initially been detected. The small dark spot is a southern cyclonic storm, the second most intense storm observed during the 1989 encounter. It was initially completely dark, but as Voyager 2 approached the planet, a bright core developed and can be seen in most of the highest resolution images. More recently, in 2018, a newer main dark spot and smaller dark spot were identified and studied. Neptune's dark spots are thought to occur in the troposphere at lower altitudes than the brighter cloud features, so they appear as holes in the upper cloud decks. As they are stable features that can persist for several months, they are thought to be vortex structures, often associated with dark spots or brighter, persistent methane clouds that form around the tropopause layer. The persistence of companion clouds shows that some former dark spots may continue to exist as cyclones, even though they are no longer visible as a dark feature. Dark spots may dissipate when they migrate too close to the equator, or possibly through some other unknown mechanism. Neptune's more varied weather when compared to Uranus is due in part to its higher internal heating. The upper regions of Neptune's troposphere reach a low temperature of 51.8 Kelvin, at a depth where the atmospheric pressure equals one bar, the temperature is 72 Kelvin. Deeper inside the layers of gas, the temperature rises steadily. As with Uranus, the source of this heating is unknown, but the discrepancy is larger. Uranus only radiates 1.1 times as much energy as it receives from the Sun, whereas Neptune radiates about 2.61 times as much energy as it receives from the Sun. Neptune is the farthest planet from the Sun, and lies over 50% farther from the Sun than Uranus, and receives only 40% its amount of sunlight, yet its internal energy is sufficient to drive the fastest planetary winds seen in the solar system. Depending on the thermal properties of its interior, the heat left over from Neptune's formation may be sufficient to explain its current heat flow, though it is more difficult to simultaneously explain Uranus's lack of internal heat while preserving the apparent similarity between the two planets. I thank you for having listened to this presentation, and I hope that you have enjoyed it.